Remember this guy? This is Asimo. Say hello Asimo, wave to everybody, there you go. Now he was created by Honda, yeah, the car company. Now they did that back in 2000 and in 2022 they retired him. They retired you, right? I said, well, yeah, they did that after they had developed the technology that went into this robot. I actually saw Asimo, I mean, not this one, obviously the full scale one, but when I say full scale, he was still quite small. But I saw Asimo in action probably about a decade ago at the Dubai Motor Show. Now, he walked, he waved, he even attempted a dance move or two, um, looking like he might be uh, about to break into a, a moonwalk, right, Asimo? Hey, you can stop waving now, right? Calm down. Uh, so... <laughs> But, you know, it was this cute little, well, the actual robot was, it was a cute little thing that looked like a baby astronaut. And really, it was like watching a baby take its first steps. A little endearing, but a little awkward. So just a bit of fun from Honda, eh? Well, no, because the company used a lot of the tech that they developed for this guy in other applications. But as for Asimo himself, he wasn't good for much more than shaking dignitaries' hands and uh, serving them glasses of water on a tray. Fast forward to just two years since they retired poor little Asimo, now, in 2024, and the robotic landscape is as crowded as my browser tabs. Elon Musk, not to be outdone, introduced us to Tesla's very own robot, Optimus. Uh, and no, despite the missed opportunity, it's not called Optimus Prime. I'm not the only one who's disappointed, right? Now this robot can not only dance, but it can also do yoga, and it can delicately handle an egg without turning it into an omelet. And that's no yolk. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. But really, the reality is that for a robot to handle an egg is a lot harder than you might think. But just look at the movement of those hands and fingers. That's really something, right? The sophistication of these latest robots is simply mind-blowing. Now, they first had Gen 1 of Optimus, that arrived in 2022, and this sleeker version is actually Gen 2. This video that you're watching is actually from December last year, 2023. And doesn't he look like the stuff of sci-fi robo nightmares, right? Where is Will Smith when you need him to bit slap a bot back into his box, so to speak, right? <laughs> Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com. Elon Musk's Tesla isn't the only automotive giant venturing into the world of robotics. Toyota, a name synonymous with reliability in the automotive industry, has been making significant strides in humanoid robots. First launched in, by Toyota in uh, 2017, this is THR3, so not C3PO then, <laughs> there's another missed opportunity. Anyway, this is a humanoid robot capable of flexible movements that mirror the actions of its remote human operator. Yeah, so this one is operated by remote control, so it isn't entirely autonomous. Uh, it can share the force exerted by and on it with the operator using force feedback. So it's kind of like an avatar and uh, it could uh, be helpful for those with disabilities, for example, perhaps. Now, recently they showed this, the Punyo, which is a soft humanoid robot designed to do tasks and picking stuff up and, uh, and being huggable. In Japanese culture, it seems very important to make robots likable, adorable, lovable. Again, it's not just uh, about having a bit of fun. Toyota envisions robots not merely as factory assistants, but as an integral part of our daily lives, uh, aiding the elderly, performing household chores, and even providing companionship. Toyota has been developing robots for years, showcased during events like the Tokyo Olympics, where their robots assisted in a variety of tasks, demonstrating a blend of functionality and social interaction. BMW, however, isn't known for developing humanoid robots. But yes, BMW is getting in on the game too. But, and um, actually, before I get into the specifics of this one, with the incredible rise of generative AI that we've been, well, we, we've seen in the last year, and then factor in things like, well, this guy, Boston Dynamics Atlas Robot, which can run, jump, climb up scaffolding, and even do backflips. I mean, wowzers, most humans can't even do that. And then consider Androids like Sophia, 
with uh, artificial skin and human-like features. This is said to be what they call a social robot that imitates human expressions. She is so convincing that Saudis even granted her citizenship. And Saudi citizenship for normal people is really hard to get, by the way, huh? You could live there for generations and still not get it. But Sophia not only got it in record time, but she also became the first android to receive legal personhood in any country. Combine all of this together, and we are astonishingly close to having our favorite Star Trek android, Data, in real life. I'm not joking. In fact, real life robotics might actually outpace all of our imaginings from science fiction, much quicker than we had actually imagined. I mean, remember Lost in Space? We thought robots would be like this. But we always imagined robots uh, would be a bit socially inept finding speech contractions and slang difficult to manage and be unable to comprehend human behavior and emotions as well as have difficulty with creative activities such as art and literature. But if you've used ChatGTP, the generative AI system, you'll know just how clever it has and is continuing to become. Remember the Turing test? A test for intelligence in a computer requiring that a human being should be unable to distinguish the machine from another human being by using the replies to questions put to both. Well, ChatGTP aced that test ages ago. So has anyone combined all of these things that I've just mentioned together? So now let's get back to BMW and its joint venture with OpenAI. Now, OpenAI are actually the people behind ChatGTP. And also they've teamed up with another company, AI Robotics, in, uh, in America. And uh, they're using, the, and this, the, the result of that is this. It's the Figure One robot. So it's a joint venture between BMW, Figure, and OpenAI. And it's already working in some BMW facilities. Now, I just want you to watch this video. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Now you can find the full video widely across the internet. You can just search for it. But imagine, this is a robot that talks with a human-like voice, the ums and ahs that doesn't even need direct instructions. You don't have to ask it to give you an apple. You just tell it that you're hungry and it figures out the rest. They also show it multitasking. It's answering a question while clearing away rubbish. Yes, okay, it's a little slow to respond initially, but that'll change very quickly, I'm sure. And uh, when it does react, it does so in a manner that's smooth, fast, and very accurate. So what do we have here? The ultimate robot machine then? I mean, that's a play on BMW's traditional tagline of ultimate driving machine, if you remember. But, you know, honestly, it's staggering. And the thought that within years, companies like Tesla and BMW might be offering these things for sale is mind-blowing. Shout out time, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps. It really does. So why are car companies so interested in developing robots? Well, I feel the answer is obvious and perhaps a little sad for car enthusiasts like me. The fact is, they are looking at the future. They're looking at a world where personal vehicle ownership may decline due to environmental concerns, so-called green legislation, plus increased urbanization, and the rise of shared mobility, uh, and very probably the arrival of real autonomous vehicles. I don't mean the autopilot systems on some of today's cars that claim to be autonomous. I mean mobility pods that you can call to your location and literally tell it not only where you want to go, but you'll probably be able to say things like, I fancy a night out, take me somewhere cool. Or I want to go see such and such a movie, take me to a cinema showing it. And it'll probably not only figure that out, but it'll probably book the tickets for you on the way. So the car escape will change dramatically. The whole concept of car ownership may, may well disappear completely at some point. So car companies are pivoting. They kind of have to. It makes sense that they're leveraging their expertise in engineering, manufacturing, and automation to stake their claim in the next technological frontier, 
humanoid robots, not just for commercial or industrial use, you know, things like maybe working as waiters in a restaurant or working on the production line for the next smartphone, but also as domestic, what, appliances, servants, assistants, carers, companions, possibly all of those actually. Now, with the integration of generative AI, you end up with androids that are capable of conversing naturally with humans, distinguishing between objects, and responding to instructions with a level of comprehension and nuance previously not seen in machines of any kind. This isn't just about making robots, it's about redefining our interaction with technology, making it more intuitive, natural, and importantly human. I mean, these are basically data. So will we have a real life data soon? I think we will, and I reckon we won't have to wait till the 24th century. I think we'll see a version of data within a decade. Of course, one might question, why are we striving to make robots seem human-like, i.e. androids as they're known? Um, after all, I mean, why do they need to have two arms, two legs, a head, and a face of sorts? I guess it's about the human need to connect and relate to technology. Humanoid robots by design evoke a sense of familiarity. They walk, talk, gesture like us, bridging the gap between cold machinery and warm, relatable beings. I say warm, but you know, you, know what, you know what I mean. This isn't just a preference. I think this is our psychological need. It would seem that to integrate robots into our daily lives, we must see a reflection of ourselves in them, ensuring a smoother, more natural integration into our social and personal spaces. Again, we'll need to relate to them to connect to them. And in this, perhaps they are closer to our connection with cars than might be obvious. After all, we car fans often ascribe a soul to our cars. We see them as more than just an assembly of metal and plastic. We care for them, look after them. Maybe we even talk to them. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Are you enjoying the video? Well, make sure you've punched the like button. It helps. But of course, it's not just car companies looking into robotics. Frankly, they're probably a little on the periphery right now, even though they are able to leverage their massive R&D facilities, engineering expertise, and vast budgets to accelerate development far quicker than, say, small new startups. And don't forget if, no, actually when, these androids go into mass production, car assembly plants will probably be ready to make that switch they're already mostly using robots to assemble stuff anyway. Meanwhile, the startups and even established tech companies are, of course, also spearheading the robot revolution. Take, for example, Japan's SoftBank Pepper robot. Now, this has been interacting with humans in shops since the middle of the last decade. I myself interacted with it um, many years ago back in Dubai, and it's been learning from that experience. The company also produces the, the NAO Now companion bot. Similar to this, there is the Promobot from Europe. Again, it's used to interact with humans and work as an assistant, a concierge, a tour guide, and even as a medical assistant. China's Uptech Robotics makes machines for education, entertainment, and even has them working in factories. America's Agility Robotics does the same thing. It essentially has worker droids, which are working alongside humans right now in warehouses. You can also get a company that creates this little mobile or uh, portable cafe with uh, an android figure at the front, dare I say, almost like a fembot type, a type, and then the rest of the mechanism then makes the drinks for you. It's all done by robots. And of course, you have major companies like Google, Samsung, and no doubt Apple that will also be working on robots as well. It's interesting to note that last month uh, in February, um, Apple seems to have abandoned plans to make its own electric car, something that it's actually been planning for like a decade, right? Um, and I can't help but think that the savvy company has sort of realized that it's not worth it right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually diverted and is pouring all its efforts into AI and robotics instead. I mean, so many of us rely so much on our iPhones, right? I certainly do. Surely we would be the first to happily accept the idea of a domestic robot from Apple. After all, the phone already has all our details and knows everything about us, right? <laughs> but who's going to win this robot race? It's anyone's guess, really. Will car companies with their mastery over machines lead the charge? Or will tech giants with their deep roots in software and AI pull ahead? I don't know, really. It's a 
popcorn moment really, isn't it? I mean, just grab a box, sit back, and watch how this unfolds. And make sure you have your loo break first, because I think this is all going to happen very quickly uh, once it all gets going. And let's be honest, I feel in some cases, they can't come soon enough. I mean, right now here in the UK, the NHS health service is under extreme stress. It's close to collapse. And one of the main reasons is that we don't have enough medical staff. There's a shortage literally of tens of thousands of doctors, nurses, medical practitioners uh, in the service at the moment. And in some, uh, you know, I mean, in the case of a doctor, it takes seven years to train one. You could probably program an Android GP in about seven minutes, I should imagine. But would you trust it though? It's all looking inevitable though, isn't it? From serving as our personal assistants to potentially saving lives in hospitals, human robots are gearing up to become a ubiquitous part of our daily lives. The question isn't if they'll become as common as smartphones, but when they will become as common as smartphones. And as we stand on the brink of this robotic renaissance, one thing's for sure, the future looks, in the words of Spock, fascinating, with more than a hint of sci-fi come to life. And the sci-fi fan in me can't help but get excited by the whole thing. So whether you're a car enthusiast or a tech geek or a sci-fi fan or someone who's just curious about the future, the development of humanoid robots is a storyline that you will want to follow. Because from doing our chores to raising our kids, these machines are poised to redefine our relationship with technology, making the leap from science fiction to science fact in record time. This is going to happen. Uh, this is happening. The only question is, what will we do? When robots are doing everything, what's left for us? Now that's a whole other conundrum. Maybe that's a whole other video, but I welcome your comments and your views on that uh, below and I'll catch you all in the next video. A brown car guy.